that's the intro to Beyonce's single, Texas Hold'em, which features the banjo playing of Rain and Giddens. This comes from what appears to be an upcoming country album from Beyonce, and the inclusion of Rhiannon and the banjo could not be more fitting. I'll show you how to play this song in this video, but first let me just share with you the little bit that I know about the history of the banjo, which gives some context to its place in this song, in country music, and in American culture. I don't own a minstrel banjo, the type of banjo Rhiannon used on Texas Hold'em. But I do own this gourd banjo, which is fretless like Rhiannon's minstrel banjo, so it's at least my best bet at capturing her sound on this track. This is a modern gourd banjo, but in some ways it's not too different from the earliest forms of the banjo, which were handmade instruments, built and played by enslaved African musicians in the Caribbean in the 1600s. Instruments like these are directly descended from instruments from Africa, like, for instance, the Akonting. But the neck on this banjo is much more like one that you'd find on a minstrel banjo. These banjos came at the rise of commercial industrialized banjo production in the 1800s as a result of the explosion of blackface minstrelsy. In minstrel shows, white performers would black their faces in performances that harshly mocked black people, often including the banjo in songs and skits using the banjo playing styles of black musicians in what became one of the most popular forms of entertainment in the United States into the early 1900s. Many popular American songs, ones that are still sung and taught today, for instance, Oh Susanna and Camp Town Races, were written and performed in these shows. Along with the popularity of the minstrel show came an increased interest in the banjo among white Americans. At the same time that minstrel shows fueled and reinforced brutal racist stereotypes about black people during and after enslavement, new white banjo players sought to learn to play in styles which originated with enslaved black musicians, causing a massive boom in banjo production and interest. And though the banjo had, by the early 1900s, become a part of folk traditions throughout the American Southeast among both black and white musicians, the prevailing misconception is that the roots of country, bluegrass, and old-time music begin with settlers of European descent in Appalachia. But it's only part of the story. Due to a segregated recording industry, we're generally much more familiar with early white country artists. Artists who were commercially successful are seen as the forefathers of the genre, leaving behind black artists who couldn't be marketed in the same way. As a result, certain instruments and genres, like the banjo and country music, are seen as uniquely white cultural products, despite the historical reality. So with all of this historical context in mind, Beyonce's inclusion of Rihanna's Clawhammer banjo on Texas Hold'em gives the song much deeper roots than most music marketed as country today. Of course, the definition and sound of country music and the sound of the banjo will always change, as it always has, but it's nice to see its unchanging, albeit overlooked roots in black American culture represented so prominently and so well by Rain and Giddens. If you're interested in really learning about the history of the banjo, there are some links I'll share in the description of this video to some books, articles, and videos which I've personally found really helpful, because what I've shared here is just the absolute tip of the iceberg. Also, you should know that there are fantastic black musicians playing the banjo today in old time country and bluegrass music, many of whom tend not to receive equitable representation in their fields. So I've left some more links to some artists you should know about in the description below as well. Okay, so now let's actually talk about playing the song Texas Hold'em. Turns out that most of the banjo in the song happens in the first 12 seconds, the intro. There's a little bit of banjo throughout the rest of the song here and there, but for the most part, that hook that you're hearing happens at the beginning. And it's just a couple simple patterns. It's not gonna be too out of reach for you if you have a little bit of a foundation in Clawhammer banjo. As you can tell, I have a hard enough time with it myself being somewhat new to Clawhammer banjo, but I can at least tell you what it is that Rhiannon's playing. And first of all, you wanna get your banjo set up. You'll notice this is not the gourd banjo I played at the beginning of this video. 
it's very cool, but it's fretless, and a lot of people are actually playing fretted instruments, so obviously you can play this on fretless just like Rhiannon did, but given that most people are gonna be using fretted instruments, we'll just do that. It's a little easier to explain that way as well. But to get it set up, you actually have to get in the correct tuning. It's tuned down pretty low. And the way you wanna think about that is it's basically like your standard open G tuning that you tune for a lot of tunes on the banjo, which is from first string to fifth string, D, B, G, D, G. That's kind of the most standard open G tuning. It's like that tuned all the way down to an open D chord instead. So instead of an open G chord, we have open D, which are these notes. A, F sharp, D, A, D. And it's very possible that if you tune your banjo down that low, the strings will get really loose and it might become even kind of unplayable. So again, feel free to just do this in standard open G tuning. It'll all work the same. If you wanna be in the same key as the Beyonce track, you're gonna to have to tune down or play this with some different shapes. But if you wanna just play this on your own, any tuning, just an open chord tuning like open G will work fine. Now, as far as actually playing the intro, there's really just a couple one measure patterns that get repeated in different orders. So it might take a little while to get it all up to speed, but in terms of just retaining the information, I think it's pretty manageable. We're just going to break this down measure by measure. To start out with your striking finger, for me that's my index finger, you're going to play the third string open followed by first string, fifth string, like this. Almost every measure in this intro starts with some version of that pattern, so get used to it. And then we also have this pattern that's extremely common. We're going to actually ghost that first string, meaning we're gonna to pretend to play it, but not actually play it. We're gonna go right past it. Thumb is gonna land on the fifth string. We'll play that. Then we're gonna land on the second fret of the fourth string. And that's our next pattern. And so all together we have this. And with all of these measures, you can basically loop any of them on their own. So just for the sake of practice, it might be a good idea to just take that and run with it for a little while before you move on. Then moving on, our second half of this looping pattern starts the same way. We've got our open third string followed by first string, fifth string. What happens after that is a hammer on from the open fourth string to the second fret on the fourth string followed by our first string, fifth string. So altogether, that measure goes like this. And those two patterns that we just looked at go back to back and they loop. That's actually over half the entire intro right there. Then after we play that two measure pattern three times, we have something different. We're gonna have our same open third string followed by first fifth. Then we're gonna do a pull off from two to zero on the third string. 
and first, then fifth. The second half of this two measure phrase starts with a slide from two to three on the third string. You do that twice in a row. Then we end this measure the same way as we ended the last measure with pull off from two to zero on the third string followed by first fifth. Now it's worth considering that we're playing a fretted instrument in this example, and you probably are too. If you're playing fretless, then this won't be as much of an issue. But consider that Rhiannon's playing a fretless instrument, so she's not sliding exactly from two to three, and that's kind of the nature of what you might call like the in-between notes, the blue notes. It's one of the ways we describe kind of the microtonality of some of this music. A lot of early American music, blues, jazz, old time, folk, all of that stuff includes this stuff that doesn't fit perfectly within the frets. So if this sounds a little stale to you, that's because it's not really capturing the full melodic concept. So you have to listen to that original recording and see if you can try to emulate that maybe by bending or sliding a little bit more or less. There are some ways you can try to capture that, but it is going to be easiest on a fretless instrument. Now, everything I just showed you is the first eight measures of that intro. That's a little chunk there. So here's how that entire section sounds. Following all of that, we just have a one measure phrase that we repeat three times. And that starts with our second fret on the fourth string, followed by first string, fifth string. Then we've got something just a little different. We're once again gonna go to that first string, just set up our thumb on the fourth string, and we're gonna play open fourth with the thumb, then fret two index, and then thumb on the fifth. Then you just put those two ideas together and you've got a remaining looping phrase. Three times, then we end up on the third string. And that's the whole intro to the song. I can tell you I'm definitely not capturing all the sound, the experience that Rhiannon has. I'm kind of just getting started on Clawhammer myself in a way. So that's my best bet on how she played that. And hopefully that's helpful to you. But you might also find that if you like playing the intro, you might wanna play the rest of the song too. And there's a little bit of banjo in there, but for the most part, that's where most of the banjo is. But if you do wanna play the rest of the song, you're in luck because the chords are pretty straightforward in terms of a lot of folk, bluegrass, old time chord progressions. So you should be able to handle it. And there's a couple patterns you can kind of extrapolate from what you've played in this intro that'll work great over the rest of it, the verse, the chorus, all that stuff. For the most part, the chords in the song are D, G, and A. Of course, if you're thinking in this tuning as if it's like your open G, that's like G, C, D. So your G, C, D shapes will work great for this. And you can play whatever patterns you want, but here's a couple ideas that kind of fit with the rhythm that Rhiannon's playing over the intro that will then seemingly fit over the rest of the song as well, at least for what I can hear. So these are some ideas that you can use over these chords that are a little more strummy, still claw hammer, but they'll fill in some of the gaps. And it's something that if you wanted to cover this song or sing it yourself, then this would be a good accompaniment for that. So for this open chord, what I'm thinking is playing basically the same pattern as the beginning of the intro, but maybe just getting a couple extra strings just to fill in some of the gaps. So that would really sound like this. I'm just gonna give it an extra strum here. So 
So it's basically the same idea as before, but instead of just hitting just the first string, I'm gonna strum the entire chord. The rest of the, the pattern is basically the same idea. So folks, I hope you found that interesting and maybe even helps you out a little bit in figuring out some of this stuff. It's definitely an interesting track, interesting song with some really great banjo playing. I love the tone. It was recorded so well. So many great things about what Rhiannon's doing and her participation in that song. Make sure you check out the links in the description for all the stuff that I mentioned earlier in the video. You can also get the tablature for all of this stuff in the link in the description of this video. Most of the time you can find tablature for my videos on Patreon where you can subscribe to support me and get bonus materials. This one's free on me, but if you're interested in other banjo learning materials, you can get that at patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. Of course, feel free to subscribe to this channel and like this video, all of that stuff, but otherwise that's going to do it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.